this. This is what I wanted to do my entire life. Swordsmanship is my passion. It's what inspires me. Historical swordsmanship is the study of historical European martial arts, which are the fighting arts that existed throughout Europe during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. It's far more mental and it's much more of a chess game than it is a all-out slugfest. There's many different types of HEMA games practice. HEMA is the acronym for Historical European Martial Arts. And there's two main tracks that we focus on here at the Academy. One of which is the two-handed sword known as the longsword. We teach a German style of this, and with this weapon, it was a knightly weapon being used in the later Middle Ages and into the early Renaissance. The other main weapon that we teach here is the Italian rapier, which is a weapon seen in the 16th and into the 17th century. It's a predominantly thrust-oriented weapon. Uh, you would have seen it used for duels, it would have been used for self-defense, it even would have seen some military use. The instructors here at Virginia Academy of Fencing are really top notch. They're regularly invited to teach at various national and international events and are recognized for their contributions to the historical swordsmanship community. The curriculum used here has been well developed over more than the past decade um, and has yielded some incredibly talented martial artists. You learn the history, but you're also getting in shape at the same time. You're improving your cardio, you're moving around, you're getting exercise. Anyone who starts is going to gain coordination, they're going to gain dexterity, strength, flexibility, as well as overall fitness and conditioning. So you end up, you know, getting all of this great total body fitness in one activity. I have been a fanatic about swords ever since I was a kid, and finally the ability to learn how to properly use a sword is just too much of an opportunity to pass up, and it's just, here at VAF, it's a phenomenal program in order to do that. Here's this awesome tool that has no meaning if it's just sitting on the ground, right? It takes the person to really make this sword, this, this tool, blossom into an art form. We've got over 200 people here in our historical swordmanship program from bare bones beginners all the way to advanced students. We have little kids doing this, we have adults doing this. Historical swordmanship is great for kids. Let's be honest, swords are cool. They're like little sponges with batteries attached to them. They're constantly running around, but then they'll come back around and do a technique that's perfect, and you're like, we actually taught somebody something. I am really proud of our youth program here, and I'm not gonna lie, I am so jealous of the little kids that I get to teach. I would have given anything to have a program like this when I was their age. Historical swordsmanship will get kids up off the couch, moving around, and really doing something fun. There's not a lot of places on the East Coast or even in uh, the United States that you can learn about this in a facility like this. These arts were practiced once upon a time. Unfortunately, most of them have died out. The only reason we in modern times know anything about these fighting arts is because the original historical masters wrote down fencing treatises. It's only through modern research that we've been able to rediscover and honestly revive these art forms. This isn't something we just made up in our backyard. We know this is how they fought because they come straight from the words of the masters. If they hadn't written these arts down, we would have lost this to time. It's a great opportunity to actually learn about history while actually getting hands-on with the weapons that they fought with. I really want my students to understand the context behind these art forms. It isn't just about fighting, it's about culture. Honestly, if you think about it, if you had a sword sitting right in front of you, wouldn't you want to pick it up and swing it around a little bit? Once you start gaining proficiency in the main weapons, you're going to expand into learning all sorts of other weapon styles that we teach. Everything from bare-handed fighting, to staff fighting and pole arms. Rapier fencers start learning offhand weapons such as rapier and dagger, rapier and various forms of shields, rapier and cape or the cloak. Cover everything from the longsword, Single-handed sword, sword and buckler, which is a, a type of a uh, small shield, fighting with the spear, you're learning how to fight in armor and without armor, fighting with dagger and even medieval wrestling techniques. There's many elements to training. 
you can pressure test yourself against an opponent by free fencing against them. You also will need to get a complete understanding by doing solo drills, by doing partner drills, by doing test cutting, where sometimes we'll take targets and use a sharpened weapon, and you have to be able to do your form by cutting through the target. Some people are drawn to this because of that connection to history. Some people are drawn to this because they like the more competitive side of it. A lot of people like to compete in tournaments for this. Other people just like it because it's just a fun way to just get fit, to get out here and just start moving. And it doesn't matter what your reason for, for wanting to be here, just come, right? Virginia Academy of Fencing has a very friendly um, and very supportive environment. Lots of our students here um, encourage their, their classmates and their friends to always be better than they were the day before. The more hours you put in and the more people that you have willing to help you out as you go, really help sell this idea of, yes, I can be a better fencer. I can do things with a sword that I never thought I could do. My body's capable of doing so much more than I ever thought because I've put the work into it. We have students who are here seven days a week who are training several hours a day. We have students who are taking private lessons, who are taking multiple classes. So there's really this, this aspect where you can make it as hard or as difficult as you want. There's a special type of camaraderie that really develops when you're swinging swords with somebody. It's this great sense of community, of skill building, you know, of, of being the best fencer that you can. And of course the people here at BAF are some of the best people I know.